Hello my soccer universe, let's talk Europa League and even get saw through really remarkable away wins by Italian teams. However, the one Italian team that I really care about lost and was one of the victims of these. I would have enjoyed the Europa League evening otherwise a whole lot more, I gotta say. Of course the big one is Atalanta going to Liverpool, absolutely steamrolling Liverpool at least results wise if not play wise and that is something that makes this Serie A fan really 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 happy. I mean even as a Serie A fan I did not see this coming. Atalanta had a really rough week losing in the Coppa Italia away to Fiorentina then losing at Cagliari. Then you don't even play your first choice goalie. You play Musso instead of Karnaseki and Karnaseki has been one of the revelations of this season and you win 3-0 at Anfield, I mean... Also, uh, I also like this result for the pure fact that I always feel, and you know, definitely from the English media, and in part justifiably so, but also, you know, in this German-speaking uh, landscape that I am uh, in, uh, the Italian league is always a little bit looked down upon, kind of. But I really like that Atalanta did it uh, in a non-Italian display of power, you know, just sitting, sitting back and absorbing the pressure. Yes, they had to do a whole lot of that, but they were also quite proactive and that's what made this evening really, really, really special. We also have the continued story with Bayer Leverkusen, uh, just keeping it late, but keep pushing, keep pushing, get it, get, get it done. So not a good evening for English teams at all. I mean, they have not even scored a goal. And if you like, I mean, there's a St. George's Cross on the Milan crest. That was also not a good evening for Milan. Uh, I said in my short it was an annoying loss. It was because I think getting out of it with a draw, I would look at it a much happier. Um, I think it would have been the more correct result if you were to ask me. Uh, a win, of course, would be better. But, you know, I also don't want to discount the work rate that Roma put in this game also definitely has to be said and De Rossi has been doing miracles. Uh, it is also no secret, whoever comes out of this tie, yes, at the moment I'm 100% behind Milan. Milan is my team. However, who comes out of this tie? This is the team that I will support going forward. And I know there's Leverkusen looming, so they might not go. But whoever comes out of this one, uh, even if it's Roma, I will support Roma fully unless they do some SHIT in the return leg and then we had one of those classics uh Benfica against OM this has late 80s early 90s written all over, over it is one of those ties that I yeah I was really lo looking forward to and kind of lift up to that billing as well um I think that UEFA with the uh, final being played in Dublin not having the Liverpool factor there will relieve the organizing committee a teeny bit because there would be tons of tons of Liverpool fans but it doesn't mean that Liverpool are already out. I also have to say that I mean the last time they played in Bergamo they won 5-0 Covid times but also the last time that Atalanta won <laughs> and if it was Covid, was Covid time so it's all all over the place in a little bit but this was definitely shocking. In this video I'm gonna recap all the games from whatever I saw. You know, I most I saw highlights of these games. I followed them live, but it was part of a six-way uh, switch around thing. So uh, getting a feel for, for for the games was actually a little bit hard. You have to rely a lot of how the commentators feel it, and sometimes they are just uh, t uh, you know drawn by the action instead of what was actually hap hap happening on tactical level. Um, I felt this especially for the Milan Roma game uh, in a way, but you know, I uh, anyway have red and black glasses, so I might have been so sweet towards the Milan the, the direction. So it's very, very, very good to hear Mina Razuki uh, on the Serie uh, R Chronicles podcast to give her perspective on the game, which I don't necessarily 100% agree with it, but I know she's very often right there as well. And let's start. In Milan, uh, sold out San Siro, it's the big one. For me, this was the big name matchup of this quarterfinal. Not, nothing else. And the other one is Befica against OM. 
Leverkusen, West Ham, no, 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 and Atalanta, Liverpool. Yes, there's Liverpool, the big name. Uh, Atalanta is unfortunately not. Milan, Roma, that's a classic. Those are two big teams. One a truly big team and one uh, a <laughs> provincial team that acts like a big team. If I'm really, really mean to Roma. For me, Roma is either the biggest small club or the smallest big club in the world. But it just uh, the titles don't match up with uh, the noise around them but under the Rossi Roma has been doing much much better than under, under Mourinho under Mourinho Milan easily easily discarded of Roma in both games um, Milan have not lost to Roma in nine games so it was kind of bound to happen Milan is the better team I think when you watch the game overall you probably could see there's a whole lot more talent on the Milan side so Roma did, and huge props to De Rossi for that. But Roma did excellently. They nullified the left side of Milan, which is it's not happening as much this season any, anymore as it was in previous. But if you nullify the left side with Teo Hernandez and Rafa Leao, you more or less have won. You at least got, 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 got a draw, and in Roma's case, from a corn, uh, corner kick, you actually get the win. Uh, it was also that Roma put in a really hard work rate, work rate. I mean, Dybala was working out, Lukaku was working out, the entire team was working to nullify Milan as good as they could. And still, Milan had tons of chances. I mean, Tijani Reinders uh, had, uh, was making his typically runs from midfield. Same thing, Loftus-Cheek tried a little bit more offensive role as well. The thing is that Giroud had an absolute stinker of a game and I love me some Giroud. But this time, uh, especially his finishing, let him down. The goal of uh, Roma was kind of controversial because the corner kick there was a Lukaku offside before that. This should never have been a corner. The way Dybala though delivers it and the way Mancini gets away from Loftus Cheek who cannot pick him up, this uh, cannot happen. Mancini scores his second winner within a couple of days, beating Lazio in the derby, now beating Milan and yeah. Does not quite feel right. Then afterwards, Giroud has a double chance against Lukaku on the line. There you have. Then there were a few times where I thought that the goal is imminent. However, uh, they really took out Hernandez and Rafa Leao. And the other side, yes, Pulisic did not have his greatest game. And as I said, uh, the chances they felt felt Giroud were not good. The biggest one came really late when Chukwesa makes a run through the Roma defense. Place the perfect pass and Giroud puts it on the on, on the crossbar. I also have to say, Adli brought a new energy around the 6 6 minute. Also had a shot, in, yes, was tipped. Probably should never have, have gone, but also hit the crawl crossbar. Chances were there. I think Milan should have gotten out of this with a draw, if you were to ask me. Uh, going to the Olympico, I still think that Milan can win this one. But you have to adjust to Roma's work rate. That's for certain as well. So, you know, I think it's... My model says that Roma are clear, favor, are clear favorites. I mean, they have an 82% chance of advancing. And yes, with an away goal and then, you know, home, home of the March, the teams are not so mismatched overall. I can see the numbers might back us up. I mean, Roma never lost a European tie after winning in an away leg. Or yeah, even after winning the first leg. So, um... No, I will like. Because, yeah, whatever. I think I saw some statistics here. Roma is doing well there. Uh, so, advantage Roma for sure. However, I trust in Milan and Pioli as well to find a solution to this one. And as I said, a draw was in this, was very much in, in there. But yeah, be it as it may, it was a little, a little bit of a down now. Uh, West Ham also had a pretty big chance early on that uh, Kudos, you know, he passed it back. But that was the only chance for West Ham. I mean, this was Leverkusen all over, red, red, ratcheting up the pressure. And it also has to be said that um, even if Leverkusen would not have gotten a goal and West Ham go out with a nil-nil. Two yellow cards, the only two ye ye yellow cards in the game were for Paqueta and Emerson and both will miss the next match. That was already a big down of four West Ham and I think this takes out a lot of the power for West Ham. 
However, uh, the longer the game went on, it became when will Leverkusen score? When can they break it down? They created the chances and Xabi Alonso made the right substitution. He could bring on Jonas Hoffmann for Adli in the 76 minute and at the same time Victor Boniface for Patrick Schick who uh, ran himself ragged in, 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 in a way and both turned the game Leverkusen's favor and you could see the stadium already beaming and bouncing beginning you know they are so close to winning their first championship which is something you know it's now and inevitably it will happen I mean if this doesn't happen this is the biggest bottle job and would be uh, I mean this would beat everything at Leverkusen you cannot muck this up anymore it's just a matter of when and not if at this point and so the stadium was really really excited and yes it was probably a little bit annoying that you have the Werder Bremen game in mind but you have to play now the Europa League but you get it done Jonas Hoffmann I think it was after Kroenke ball come comes him in the 83rd minute makes it 1-1-0 and then he also assists Victor Boniface and I have to say I mean he was out with in, in injury the way he scored this goal he was not in good position but he makes a slight back jump to head it in that was a really, really tough header. Makes it 2-0, I think, with that 2-0. And in addition, Paketa and Emerson out. This is really all going into Leverkusen's favor. Leverkusen will make another semi-final where, yeah, they will win. It's the winner, Roma Mil uh, Milan. And, you know, there was a Roma Leverkusen semi-final last year in the Europa League, which was the last loss that Leverkusen suffered. There's a narrative for you there. Shoot Roma. Do the thing that I don't want them to do. Let's put it this way. Uh, then we go to Benfica against Marseille. Great crowd at the uh, uh, at the Stade de, de Luz. Um, I think early exchanges. You know, everyone trying to feel a little bit. I was surprised that OM is playing in blue. Uh, however, on that side with Benfica in white pants, it makes sense. I think in the return, like I would expect white pants for OM and Benfica in all red. Oh, will Benfica don black? We'll see about that. Those black jerseys uh, would be nice as well. Um, and then the goal came and opened up, up, the, up the game through Rafa Silva. Again, a pass that was played a little bit in, in his back, but he could control it, puts it in. Uh, and at that moment, then, I think that Befica were squarely in control, that it was 2-0 then uh, after Di, Di Maria really nicely played. I mean, Di Maria initiates it, plays out da, 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 to David Neres. The guy who stands on offside is uh, taking a, a, a step back and Di Maria can convert it 2-0. And at that point, you really think this is going to be very much one-sided towards Benfica. However, Obama Young manages to get one back. Uh, not a great... Uh, I think it was, uh, was also Silva. Uh, that kind of spills the ball there and then Obama Young even had a chance to equalize so you know the game is hanging a little bit more in the balance and going back to the Velodrome I could see maybe Marseille doing it but Befica the better team that we also have to have, have say but also as we said whoever whoever advances and if Benfica should advance whoever they will play they will be outsiders because we already know that Atalanta have beaten Sporting relatively comfortably Sporting is a better team than Benfica this year so going in that way uh, and you know Liverpool feasts on port port Portuguese teams however at this moment it looks very very unlikely that it will be Liverpool uh, that will advance from this one no it's not <laughs> that would be a major major, major turnaround um, I think Liverpool are to blame for two things here a wider rotation why I mean you only play yes you're in a Premier League title fight and yes you got a gut punch with the two to draw at Old Trafford but playing a second string squad nah, you don't do that win the game first then take out the players and the second thing is and that's a little bit more pop puzzling they did not expect an Atalanta team that will press high and will not just sit back and absorb the pressure. I said it already at, 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 at the beginning. They did not, and you know, then the defending for Liverpool was all over the place, even without Trent Alexander-Arnold playing. That also has to be that defense was not sort was not sorted. Uh, whenever Atalanta could hit, Atalanta had a brilliant chance early on through Pasalic that uh, Kelleher 
saved more or less with his cheek. That, uh, you could see his red cheek, F, 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 that's worse. But then, uh, also, the Liverpool pulled on, started to pile on, on the pressure. Darwin Nunez is an enigma, and I think uh, Nunez and Salah, who, who, who came a lot at them, way they, may, they try to take chances, they are more missing than hitting at this very, very, very moment. I, I actually think the form for Liverpool is starting to worry me. They weathered the storm with the injuries, and now they have a much fuller squad. They're kind of falling a little bit apart. That's the overall feeling I get from Liverpool. In any case, Harvey Elliott with the chance of Steven crossbar <laughs> upright out. That you don't see very, 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 very often. It was just in this uh, pressure moment that Atalanta hit and hit really hard. Zappacosta is playing free, he has ample of space, can pick out uh, the guy he wants, wants to play at it's Kamaka who makes it 1-0 and yes, Kala did not look good at that, that one. Or Erlan also has, has, has said that the Catelare, uh, instead of taking a shot, hit back heels, hit back, I think it was Kamaka, uh, where the shot is, isn't safe. Uh, that really shocked Liverpool uh, even so, so much. They gave away a big chance to um, Cop Miners early, uh, late in the in the first half, who uh, probably should have scored, but here Keller makes up for the goal that he conceded. Klopp makes his changes, brings us over, brings us Salah, brings us Ro Robertson, um, and the pressure becomes, the pressure is coming, you know, Salah made me missing chance, there was Nunez, of course, made me missing chance. It was intense. And then he takes Nunez off and brings Luis Diaz on. And what, what happens? Atalanta launch another car counter attack with the Ketelare, then brilliantly play. And the Ketelare was not offside. Brilliantly plays it over to Skamaka, who has confidence and one times it into the net. 2 0, and Atalanta fans celebrate. Cannot believe it. Has to be said, at this point, um, a point in time, it was probably a little bit against the run of play. However, the way Atalanta played it was. Was in a way deserved that then it got even worse. I mean, uh, Ederson probably should have made it three. Parcelage con converts. Copmans had, had, had another chance. Yes, Salah scored that goal that was offside. Salah missed some, 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 some chance, but with the 2 0, Anfield was rocked by the goddess Atalanta. And the 3 0 was not undeserved. This was a major, major, major upset. Bravo, Atalanta. Bravo, At Atalanta. And should Atalanta win the Europa League? And given uh, the way the results fell, uh, Italy will get five spots. Should Atalanta win? And Atalanta will not finish in the top five in Serie A. Serie A could have six teams in the Champions League next season. Yes, I would like to have Milan win the Europa League. But if it isn't Milan or Roma, <laughs> yes, Roma would be second. Atalanta would be my third favorite with the world. I don't necessarily see Atalanta, but if Atalanta should progress, they will be favored over whoever they play, Benfica or OM. Atalanta could make this final. Relative, they just have to weather the storm in Bergamo. Atalanta could make this final. And then Atalanta has a chance to get a sixth spot for uh, Italy in the Champions League. That would be something. In any case, that is it from me. Uh, looking forward to, 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 to return legs a little bit with trepidation. Again, I wouldn't begrudge it, Roma, but I'm all for Milan. It also has to be said. In any case, if you have enjoyed this review, let me know your thoughts on the Europa League ties. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!